Welcome back to In Ohio Country today. This week, we're at the 104th annual Ohio Farm Bureau Federation meeting here in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. We're going to have some great stories for you. I want to thank our friends at the Ohio Farm Bureau, especially Ty Higgins, for his help today. We'll have those feature stories and more this week in Ohio Country today. Farming has been in my blood. I always, I was always involved as a as a child or a kid, and growing up. And uh, it was probably after I graduated college and got married that I finally made the decision that that's what I wanted to do for a living. My name's Todd Hesterman. I'm a fourth generation farmer. Uh, we farm in both Henry and Fulton County. I've been raising soybeans ever since I've been involved. Uh, I started farming full time in 1986, uh, and my dad. Uh, was at it before that and he always grew soybeans too. There's so many segments you can cut a soybean up into and you can use it for resins and oils and feed additives. Um, it's a very diverse and, and wonderful uh, crop to be raising. As a businessman and farmer, I look at it as we always try to control our, our costs, our inputs. The checkoff was established uh, when I was a young farmer. For what it cost us, it's a small investment. To me, it's definitely been beneficial for, for the amount of the small investment we have. Uh, the return is far greater. Being on the uh, board for the checkoff, I also realize how much research costs and uh, we thought it was worth the investment to start our own lab. The Highest Soybean Council over the last year is, has been investing their checkoff funds differently than the rest of the U.S. with respect to developing soy bio-based products. They've approved and are investing in a research lab in Delaware, Ohio called Arable Research Lab where um, we're not funding commercial companies to develop products, we're developing our own soy-based products and we're working with commercial companies to, to license those technologies and sell those products to create demand for soybeans. Whether it's a, a soy methyl ester emulsion for rejuvenating roofs or a soybean oil used in lubricants for bikes, without that checkoff program, we wouldn't have been able to start an arable research lab to, to do that early proof of principle concept to, to show companies how soy can function in their existing products and, and has also just allowed us to kind of open, think openly about new ideas, just like how biodiesel was developed. Someone had to have that idea, someone had had to fund that project, that initial project, to do that research to determine if soy could be used to produce biodiesel. And now, to this day, you know, biodiesel utilizes about 25% of all the oil in the U.S. We're fortunate here in Ohio to have personnel and expertise locally. Uh, industry is so strong in Ohio that we have chemists that are available to, to help us with research. It's invaluable. That's something that as a farmer himself can't do, we have to work collectively to get that done. For every dollar I think that we invest in the Soybean Council, uh, we, we've made back probably 12 times that over the years. It, it's almost like an insurance policy, you know, that helps stimulate uh, markets and, and new uses. We actually have other soybean boards that uh, have looked at what we're doing and, and uh, we may even be able to help their states with projects as well. So I think we're a one of a kind. It's a special deal here in Ohio. Take your much needed break this off season and schedule your repairs with Apple Farm Services Winter Fix Special. Take advantage of free pickup and delivery for the first 30 miles, plus 10% off all installed parts. Tune up or repair your ag equipment, construction equipment, or lawn and garden equipment. All could be scheduled for free pickup and delivery and 10% off installed parts. Hurry and call today to schedule your off season inspections and repairs. It's the Winter Fix Special at your local Apple Farm Service. It's a humble idea. Use a biological process to turn a plant into a power source. From that idea came the first Poet Refinery. One biorefinery in one town turned into 27 facilities in 27 towns, creating new local jobs, producing hundreds of millions of gallons of ethanol, and providing renewable products around the world. 
Suddenly, that one little idea seems a whole lot bigger. See the world differently with Poet. Allen Davis Insurance Agency is your solutions provider, a business owner, and an active farmer. No one knows farmers' needs better than Allen. Give them a call today at 419-738-7447 for auto, home, life, business, recreational, total farm protection, and more. Call 419-738-7447 with offices in Lima, Wapakoneta, and Minster. Or check us out on the web at allendavisinsurance.com. Welcome back to In Ohio Country Today, and joining me now is Bill Patterson, President of the Ohio Farm Bureau Federation. Bill, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dan. Really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, before we get started talking about your annual uh, convention here in beautiful downtown Columbus, let's talk a little bit about growing up in Geauga County. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I appreciate we're talking there a little bit. You're from Cleveland. Appreciate that yeah. Jog County is just a beautiful time, town and beautiful area. And uh, we have a fruit farm there right outside of Cuyahoga County. Um, and so we, we, we really deal with a lot of the people from there that come out. And so we just appreciate being in the country but close to the city. Yeah, the Grand River Valley is some of the prettiest yeah. area in the state. And, of course, for their fine wineries up there, the state wineries, if you will, that I would liken to anything in Napa Valley, wouldn't you? Yeah, we have some beautiful, just north of us in Lake County, just some, some absolutely beautiful wineries. And, and really, that's drifting down a little bit to Geauga County. Geauga County is, is sort of building a name as well. Yeah, no kidding. One of my favorites, of course, is the maple syrup that comes from Geauga County. Got hooked on that when I was a kid, and I'm sure that product is still going strong, right? Yeah, we, uh, that's one thing that we do among a lot of people in Geauga County. We like to think of ourselves as uh, the, the, the maple capital of the Midwest there. And, uh, yeah, and we yeah. do. It just, it just tastes better, boils better, and uh, we, we love the, the maple syrup uh, in Geauga County. Oh, yeah. Fantastic stuff. How would you get started with the Ohio Farm Bureau? Well, it's probably been a little bit of a, of, of a family passion, a little bit of a heritage. Um, I have been the, I'm the third generation to serve oh, on wow. the board. And really, that's not so much the fact that um, we were told I needed to do it, but you see the results of the work that Farm Bureau does, and it makes you want to be involved. Mm. We can pretty assuredly say that we would not be farming today if not for the work of, of Farm Bureau. And so as we think about going back to the farm and being a part of the, the, the farm operation, which is now I'm the sixth generation, along with my brother, we understand the importance of being involved in your industry, um, and, and Farm Bureau is the perfect way to do that. Yeah, and the Farm Bureau's responsibilities have certainly expanded. It's more than just helping farmers, it's landowners all over the Buckeye State. In the interviews that we've had here today, the directors that we've talked to from policy to energy to water quality, all those things play a factor in moving and advancing our landowners and our farmers forward. And the Ohio Farm Bureau does a great job with that. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. There's no question that it was very deliberate when we did our mission statement that it was to advance agriculture and strengthen our communities. Mm -hmm. Because having a strong rural community in Ohio is going to deliver a strong ag community. And so when, when we're talking about landowner rights and we just continue to talk about the landowner rights and the pressure of development and energy on those, on those landowner rights, we have to have the ability to be able to do with our land within reason what we want to do with it, and we think it's a fundamental right. You know, Bill, it's more than just rural areas that we're talking about. Ohio Farm Bureaus have, the Ohio Farm Bureau has members in all of our major cities, and when we're looking at more urban agriculture coming into the forefront, that's, that's something that also the Ohio Farm Bureau has been very beneficial in, right? Uh, it's funny you say that because just on uh, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, um, time flies, uh, I was just at an urban agriculture that uh, director John Patterson had put together an urban agricultural conference in at East Tech High in Cleveland, very specifically to talk about, not only to talk about how we build out the urban agriculture footprint, but also how to make sure that those folks that aren't exposed to agriculture on a daily basis can understand the career opportunities and the opportunities within agriculture and what ultimately it means to the, to the, to the folks that are in more urban areas to, to, to be able to, to expand out their involvement. And what about working with institutions like Central State University, Ohio State University, Heidelberg, all those that are involved in ag and extension and trying to build that 
footprint, if you will, in our urban areas. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's another great point. Our partners um, with Extension, seeing the work that, that, that Ohio State University Extension, how they're partnering exactly with those um, with those other universities and, and building out that outreach. And ultimately, you know, our Farm Bureau Foundation has really gone out to those universities and, and, and talked about our Explore Ag program um, that can help go out there and bring those programs to those urban areas. And I just had a great email with the fellow that's in charge of some uh, urban youth and he is just asking the, the Farm Bureau and we're asking him how can we partner how can we how can we bring these two together the desire and then you know the, the supply so I, I think we're gonna have some nice partnerships coming up uh, with urban agriculture Yeah, very cool of course we're here at your 104th yeah. annual meeting here in Columbus Ohio uh, obviously this will air after the fact but uh, what do you expect to accomplish at your annual event of course uh, COVID kind of put us back a couple of years. It's nice to have everybody in person again and all the fun stuff that goes on here. But what are some of the topics and some of the issues that you like to accomplish at your annual meetings like this? Yeah, so the theme this year is our legacy, our future. And so we're sort of talking about a celebration, a recognition of the past, and then where we're going to go. At last year's annual meeting, we talked about the state fair. We talked about landowner rights. We talked about energy. We talked about broadband. We set priority issues. And to be quite frank, we did a darn good job of accomplishing all, if not most, if not all, of our priority issues, at least making progress in, in all the areas. And so this year, as we talk about, you know, continue to talk about CAUV reform. We've talked about it several times, but there's just the, the pressure of eminent domain, the pressure of energy is, is unbelievable right now. And again, that balance of wanting to make sure that we protect a solid farmland base with also it's your land we need to protect your right to do what you want. So it's a, it's a fine balance, and we're, we're hoping that the delegate body sheds light for us on the Ohio Farm Bureau to, to understand what the direction that our members want us to do. It's a true grassroots operation, and we need this input and this feedback and this debate on the delegate floor to provide that direction. Yeah, we love the county uh, farm bureaus and, and what they do to get the message out and to get it to the people who need it the most. Before we let you go, why don't we make a pitch for why you should join the Ohio Farm Bureau? Well, I, I, a wise person, Roger Baker from Wayne County, said your membership in Ohio Farm Bureau protects agriculture. There you go. Every day we're out there protecting agriculture, doing the work on behalf of rural Ohio. Bill Patterson, president of the Ohio Farm Bureau Federation, has been our guest. Bill, thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. And we'll be back with more in Ohio Country today right after this. Midway Trailers is your source for Boss Snowplows. Boss Snowplows are tough, reliable, and efficient for every job. Remove more snow and ice and get jobs done faster with Boss Snowplows. Boss Snowplows are made of professional-grade equipment, offering optimal design for all conditions. Remember Midway Trailers as your source for Boss Snowplows. Check us out on the web at midwaytrailers.net. St. Mary's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has award-winning vehicles for both on and off the farm. And our Ag Pack incentives give you a powerful package of farm and ranch discounts and incentives worth thousands of dollars absolutely free. Stop by and see Dave Hager today, your Ag Commercial Specialist, and ask about the vehicles, discounts, and incentives in the St. Mary's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Ag Pack. You get straight talk, real service, and the right price. St. Mary's Chrysler. Welcome back to In Ohio Country today, and joining me now is Stephen Sheehy, and Stephen is the Director of Policy here in the Buckeye State for the Ohio Farm Bureau. Thanks for joining us, Stephen. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to see you, and great to see everybody here for the annual meeting. So you come up from uh, Wayne County. Let's talk a little bit about the agricultural footprint in Wayne. A lot of dairy up there, a lot of cattle, right? A lot of dairy and a lot of cattle, yep, and we have some great representation here. Uh, Roger Baker leading the way, as, yeah. as he does from Wayne County, so it's great to be part of the state you know state organization but my wayne county roots run pretty deep well let's talk about that growing up in wayne county sure yeah so i grew up just south outside of worcester out there i uh, went to triway high school played football ran track oh, yeah. uh, so got a great experience there and just uh, really grew up in that community and wanted to find ways that i could serve in public policy that you could really get back to to my hometown and, and here we are at the Ohio farm bureau no better place to do it 
Yeah, starting out as far as the Ohio Farm Bureau is concerned, the communication aspect is important. And for a guy like you talking about state policy, what form of communication do you normally use in, besides events like this? Sure, absolutely. So we do as much outreach as we possibly can. You know, Ohio Farm Bureau is a grassroots-led organization from the county level up through the state and then up to the federal level. So we work a lot with our members, you know, they, they're our boss. You know, as we see, we're gonna have uh, um, some votes here on a new policy book for 2023. Oh, yeah. And that's our guidance. You know, that's, that's what tells us when we go to talk to lawmakers and uh, the executive agencies in the state, you know, what, what do our members want? And that, that all gets made here. Well, specifically, what are some of those policy issues that, that you'll be talking about and moving forward here over the next 12 months? Sure, absolutely. Well, one of the, the largest issues that we're working on is uh, eminent domain reform. Oh, yeah. So that is a, that's a bill that's been introduced for this General Assembly. Uh, it's House Bill 698. And basically what we're trying to do is, is streamline the process for when eminent domain comes to our uh, landowners' um, gates. So a lot of times you see a lot of cases where it's really David versus Goliath. Um, mm -hmm. You have these Fortune 200 companies sometimes coming in and uh, and taking land through eminent domain. Now, how Farm Bureau, you know, we t completely understand the need, you know, for your, your public utilities, your roads, your bridges. Um, you know, we need that. We need that throughout our state. We need it throughout the country. But the manner in which Ohio does their eminent domain, how it's executed, we're well behind the times. Um, okay. So what we're looking for is, is a way to streamline uh, some judicial processes so when, when land is taken and our members uh, feel that it was done improperly, there's no real streamlined system through the court process that our landers can bring that to the attention of the judges. So this bill and what we're advocating for is really how do we streamline that and make sure there's a course of action for our landowners to make sure that, it, that they're being well compensated uh, for the land. Right. And also making sure the size, scope of the, and the practice of whatever project is going on is, is truly necessary. Mm. So we're making sure that our, our farmers have a voice in the judicial system. We're doing that through, through legislation. Well, when you look at what happens in the state house, it probably starts more in the counties, right? Absolutely. Yeah, there is not one member that I can think of in the General Assembly that doesn't know of a personal story from their constituents that, that is a member of ours. Um, so that really is a county-led, district-led uh, initiative. You know, one of the best things that can happen is, is our members are vocal with their state representatives, their state senators, uh, explaining, you know, life on the farm, uh, explaining the issues that they're facing. And there's a lot of ways that the legislature can act to make sure that Ohio's number one industry of agriculture is supported and is not lost. You know, another issue we're really focusing on is preserving our farmland. You know, once it is gone, it is gone. And it it's a finite resource, and we have some of the best farmland in the country here in Ohio. So we're just making sure that, you know, that we're doing everything we can to protect that uh, while also protecting, you know, private property rights as well. So a lot going on in that, in that space, I'm in a domain, domain and farmland preservation, really important topics that we're looking to, to push forward through the next couple of weeks and into the next couple of years. You know, we talk about communicating that to our landowners and our farm owners. You know, basically what uh, you you have to do is sometimes get face to face. So, uh, I'm sure you're traveling all over the state to try to spread that issue, right? Absolutely. And one of the best things throughout the summer is getting to meet a lot with the county boards and, and hearing issues from across the state. So, southeast Ohio to northwest Ohio, northeast Ohio, where I'm from, you know, northeast Ohio to central Ohio, the issues range. You know, um, there's different different crop types, crop soils uh, that we try to try to focus on and all of that weaves itself together in the state of Ohio. So making sure that we, you know, we're the general farm organization and we're able to, to best represent the needs of, of our members. Well, let me tell you, this is a hot topic and it's something that's very important to our farm owners and our landowners. For more information, they can go where? Uh, you can go to OFBF.org. Uh, it's our, our website. Our contact information is there. Feel free to reach out to us at any time. Stephen Chihai has been our guest, policy director for the state of Ohio here at the Ohio Farm Bureau Federation. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me and thank you for being here. And we'll be back with more in Ohio Country today right after this. Closed captioning paid for in part by the following. Die Real Estate and Land Company specializes in farmland and recreational land throughout Ohio. A company for people who enjoy the rural lifestyle and looking to buy or sell their land. All of our land agents are members of the Realtors Land Institute and have extensive experience in farming and agricultural land business. At Dye Real Estate and Land Company, 
We'll work with you to tailor fit a plan that works best for you, your family, and your investments. Our services include 1031 tax deferred exchanges, land brokerage, land auctions, and CMAs and valuations for estates and planning. We are Die Real Estate and Land Company. Call us today and visit our website at dierealestate.com. Die Real Estate and Land Company. We know the land business because we live it every day. Allen Davis Insurance Agency is your solutions provider. A business owner and an active farmer. No one knows farmers' needs better than Allen. Give them a call today at 419-738-7447 for auto, home, life, business, recreational, total farm protection, and more. Call 419-738-7447 with offices in Lima, Wapakoneta, and Minster. Or check us out on the web at allendavisinsurance.com. Welcome back to In Ohio Country today, and joining me now is Brandon Kerr. He's the Senior Director for State and National Policy for the Ohio Farm Bureau. We're here at the 104th Annual Meeting in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Brandon, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's happy to be here. Thanks so much for joining us. A lot on your plate, I'm sure, over the next 12 months. Let's start with the Farm Bill. You know, what do, you, what do we see moving forward with the Farm Bill? Yeah, it's going to be um, an exciting time next year. Obviously, the Farm Bill, one of our highest priorities every five years, has some of the most important programs for agriculture, particularly when it comes to risk management. So crop insurance, mm -hmm. uh, all those Title I commodity supporting programs, so important to agriculture and providing that agricultural safety net. So, you know, we're, we're going to be looking at, one, preserving those things that are critical, to, to agriculture, um, hopefully seeking some increases in reference prices for those Title I programs and then just making sure that that crop insurance program is really solid for farmers moving forward. It's going to be of the highest priorities in that bill for us. What about reaching across the aisle on both sides of the aisle? It's difficult sometimes to get the farm bill passed in the first year that it's up there. Sometimes it's extended and extended again. So what are the communications moving forward with both sides of the aisle to make sure that it's done in a timely fashion. Yeah, that bipartisan cooperation on the farm bill is so important. You know, every farm bill that we've passed over the years has had that bipartisan buy-in. Mm. And, uh, you know, here in Ohio, we have two members um, on the Agriculture Committee who will be in that minority party, two Democrats sitting on, on, on the Agriculture Committee that we work with really closely. And so, uh, you know, that bipartisan cooperation is really important, bridging the gap between the farm programs and the nutrition programs, which are, you know, generally important to, you know, Know, more urban Democrat uh, type members of Congress. It, and represent the majority of the farm bill. Let's make that Absolutely. point clear. The vast yeah. majority of the yeah. farm bill, right? Um, you know, more than 80% of the funding in the farm bill is for yeah. those nutrition programs. So it is important to build a, a, a strong coalition. And we work with, with folks from both sides of the aisle. And usually the farm bill, you know, tends to be a little more cooperative, a little more bipartisan for those reasons. So that's good. What are some of the other state and national policies we need to be aware of over the next 12 months? Yep. So, you know, for here in Ohio, I think the topic of conversation that we're hearing a lot from our members is in a state like Ohio, we are facing significantly increasing development pressures from all types of development. You know, in, in a state in Ohio, like Ohio where you have eight major et metropolitan areas, right. um, you know, you, you hear the announcement of things like the, the, the Intel project here in Ohio, which is huge for economic development in Ohio. Mm -hmm. but Every time one of those major projects gets announced, it gobbles up a lot of farmland as well. Right. Uh, you know, you talk about roadway development, uh, pipeline, utility easement development. You know, Ohio, there's a lot of that activity going on. So making sure that, that landowners and, and farm ground um, has a fair process, a fair set of rules to play by, making sure that that farm ground is properly uh, accounted for, remediated, right. repaired when those types of uh, infrastructure projects go in the ground. That's something that's really top of mind for a lot of our members. It's going to be a, a big topic. Uh, it's been a big topic of conversation in our policy development process. I think our delegates are going to talk a lot about that this mm. week here at annual meeting. So how does that play into effect as far as land prices are concerned? I mean, if you're going to have such a demand with new projects like Intel, you, you got to see farmland prices going up. Good things, bad things about that. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen that certainly here in Ohio. Um, you know, I think if you go back to 2015, 2016, the average price of uh, farmland was about $6,000 an acre. Mm -hmm. We're up to well over $7,200 an acre, I think, now, if you look at the USDA statistics on that. So we've seen a steep 
uh, increase you know, steadily over the last few years in, in farmland prices, and that's certainly a concern. Uh, half of farm ground in Ohio is rented as well, and that's certainly, you know, for those, those, that rental ground, those rental rates are going to be driven up in areas where there's heavy development as well, so that's, that's something that's very top of mind for our, for our members. Now, before we let you go, from a credibility standpoint, how'd you land in this position? <laughs> well, uh, I spent the early part of my career working for the state legislature, okay. and uh, at a, once upon a time worked for uh, Senator George Voinovich, uh, oh, way back in the day now, um, and and had a keen interest in agriculture. I, I my wife and I live on her family's farm down in Fairfield County, so I okay, uh, have kind of close personal connection to, to the agriculture industry that way. So this was this position was the, the perfect fit. I could get my public policy itch scratched, but I got to get to work for farmers and an issue set that I care about, so it's great. Well, what's great is that you have that farm background plus the political background to be able to communicate farmers' needs, and that's why you're here with the Ohio Farm Bureau. If people want more information about what you're doing, where can they go? Yeah, OFBF.org. Uh, and our advocacy tab has uh, all the issues that we're working on on behalf of farmers here in Ohio. Brandon Kerr has been our guest senior policy director for the Ohio Farm Bureau, both state and national policy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And we'll be back with more in Ohio country today right after this. Your outdoor fun starts here at Dad's Toy Shop. See us today for all of your favorite remote control land, air, and watercraft, and so much more. Dad's Toy Shop in downtown Wapakoneta is your one-stop shop for all of your hobby needs. Our farm department is committed to providing ag professionals the products, coverages, and peace of mind needed to run a successful operation. With our home office located in the heart of farm country, many of us have first-hand experience when it comes to farming, and we know how to take out the risk. Under one policy, we can provide total protection of your investment, from your home and barns, to your equipment and livestock. We also provide an outstanding equine coverage, from a homeowner with a single horse, to a professional breeder, and everything in between. Come join us and experience the Salina difference. Hey, that's going to do it for this week's edition of In Ohio Country today from the 104th Annual Ohio Farm Bureau Federation meeting here in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. If you want more information on the stories that you've seen today, check us out on the web at inohiocountry.com. Don't forget to check out our podcast as well at inohiocountry.com. Have a good day, everybody.